What is up people and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the R36 Eruptor in Helldivers 2. This is the new explosive bolt action sniper rifle that's part of the Democratic Detonation War Bond. It's totally OP, meta and it's going to break the game. Just look at how I one shot this Bile Titan. If you couldn't tell, that was fake, but I swear this happens every single time. A new weapon or stratagem comes out that's actually good and does what it's supposed to and people start screaming straight away, it's too OP, it's the new meta, it's gonna break the game and subsequently it then gets nerfed and them same people it seems like start crying saying there's nothing good to use in this game, I can't compete on Helldive, I feel weak as a player. Someone make it make sense because I can't make sense of it. Anyway. Let's get into it. To purchase this weapon, you're gonna go into the Democratic Detonation War Bond. Scroll down to page two. It's gonna be in the bottom left-hand corner and it costs 60 medals. Taking a closer look at this weapon, we're gonna to go to the armory, into primaries, and it's gonna be in the explosive section. The description reads as follows. This bolt action rifle fires jet assisted shells that explode shrapnel in all directions upon impact. Not recommended for close quarters use. For stats, it's got 380 damage, a capacity of 5, 75 recoil, and a fire rate of 25, and for weapon traits, it's medium armor penetrating and explosive. In terms of what this weapon comes with, it has 12 mags, each one contains 5 shells, and it has a 50 meter, 100 meter, and 200 meter scope. So with all of that out of the way, let's get straight into the review. I'm going to discuss pros, cons, and then do a final review. My first pro is going to be the ammo. I remember when I first dropped down with this weapon to test it out, I actually thought it was glitched when I seen 6 out of 12 mags. I was thinking, surely that's not right that I have 12 mags, but it is, and it's a welcome addition. This is obviously very nice because you're not going to be looking for ammo constantly. And I know this is one of the first talking points for people who are saying that this weapon is OP, but you have to remember that there are only 5 bullets in each mag, so you can do the math on that one. But once you actually use this weapon and the initial shock factor of that number wears off, you realise having 12 mags is not that crazy, but just nice. You can definitely get a lot done with the bullets you have, but there are other factors in play, we'll discuss them later. The next pro is going to be the damage. The Eruptor is taking out a lot of things and with only one shot. Looking at the Automatons, Troopers, Scout Striders and Devastators can be taken out in one shot. So can Gunships, but that's a little bit more difficult due to their movement and how far away they can be. Hulks can be taken down with 3 to 4 shots to their heatsink, and it's roughly the same for tanks, which can be taken down with 4 shots to their heatsink. If we go over to determinants, then scavengers, hunters, warriors, stalkers, nursing, and boil spewers can all be taken out in one shot. Chargers can also be taken out in one shot, but this is very hard to do and inconsistent. So, if aiming for the likes of their weak spots on their derriere, you're looking at 4 shots. And the weak spot at the back of Boil Titans can be destroyed in 2 to 3 shots, which I think is pretty good. The AoE or area of effect is another pro. Alongside one shot and a scout strider, I think that I will forever remember firing one shot and killing 4 to 5 enemies with that single bullet for the first time forever. It is very, very nice like. You shoot one enemy, and like we previously discussed in the damage pro, you're most likely going to kill them. And now on top of that, you're going to take out surrounding enemies also, or at the very least stagger them. It's a beautiful sight to behold, and on top of all of that, if any robots are extra combustible, or bugs like the nursing and boil spewers get hit, they seem to set off an extra chain reaction, taking down even more enemies. And my last pro is going to be the versatility against enemy structures. This was the big selling point for lots of people, and it does deliver. This can destroy automaton fabricators as well as cannons, although the latter is more difficult because the eruptor is so slow firing, and the cannon is constantly turning and you need 4 shots to its heat sink specifically, but it still can be done. On the terminate side, it can take out bug holes and spore spewers with one shot for both, and to my knowledge it can destroy illegal broadcasts, but it cannot destroy mortar emplacements, I'm not sure if this is intentional or if it will be changed in the future. But regardless, that is still a wide array of structures that can be destroyed with something that is a primary weapon, and it's not just the fact that they can be destroyed, it's the range at which you can destroy them, so if you come across a small outpost, you don't need to use an airstrike to get rid of it, and you don't need to run in and risk dying to throw your grenade into the vent. 
the safe said airstrike you can sit back and comfortably at about 80 to 100 meters away shoot a bullet into the vents and destroy the outpost now let's talk about the cons because believe me they do exist the first one being it's slow and i mean that in every single way it's slow when you're scoped in trying to track your targets it's slow to rack the ball to get your next round in it's slow and to reload the weapon it's slow although i am aware of a glitch to bypass this but as the weapon naturally reloads it's slow on top of that its range is quite limited for a sniper rifle after 150 meters the round automatically detonates but to be safe i'm going to say that that can happen anywhere around 100 to 150 meters which isn't great and i understand that just because it comes with a 200 meter scope does not mean that it needs to be capable of firing up to 200 meters but i do feel like that gives the impression that it would be able to do that alongside that there is notable bullet drop at times meaning you have to aim higher or lead on enemies depending on how far away they are at this point you can see how all of these negatives kind of play into each other you need to lead on your target sometimes but that is difficult because the gun is slow and scoped in and if you miss that might be problematic as well as you're going to be waiting a little bit before you can get another round off all of this means that the weapon is quite unforgiving powerful yes definitely but you don't want to miss any shots and this is quite obvious but it's not something you want to use in close quarters not only is it very slow but due to the nature of explosive bullets being well explosive you can have some accidents if you're not far away enough from that area of damage and the same goes for your teammates by the way so try to remember that before you fire this weapon at the bugs right behind timmy because you might do more harm than good and finally you have to work around this weapon quite a bit in terms of what stratagems you take but i'll get into that a bit more in a minute in conclusion this is an extremely powerful weapon in terms of direct damage and area of effect as well as its versatility against most enemy structures but it's not without its drawbacks it's slow to scope in and reload and is very unforgiving if you miss your shots there were situations where if i had landed my shot i could have taken out all if not most of the enemies in front of me but because i missed my shot my teammate beside me was able to clear them out before i even got another bullet ready to go i want to go back to what we were talking about earlier though where i was saying that you'll have to work around this weapon in terms of what stratagem you take because in my opinion as good as this gun is it's not a primary weapon if you think you're going to go into a hell dive mission with this weapon and actually use it as your primary for the duration without a massive change in your playstyle, you're going to struggle at times now i'm not saying that this is necessarily a negative and a lot of people me included feel like this weapon has made taking the machine guns much more viable because it's a primary weapon and because it has the diversity to destroy automaton fabricators and bulk holes you can take it and then take the heavy machine gun or stalwart and use that as your primary and the eruptor as kind of a weaker auto cannon without the backpack requirement people are saying that this is overpowered i really don't think it is i think it just fits its role perfectly i made a video yesterday which you can see here reviewing the br14 adjudicator and in the video i said that the adjudicator is attempting to fill in a role between assault rifles and marksman rifles and i don't think that it's good enough in either particular area but mainly the assault rifle side of it to warrant being picked over either of them categories and at the same time i don't think that either the assault rifles or marksman rifles are powerful enough as it is for a weapon like the adjudicator to exist that gels them together as if people are so stuck between what to pick if we look at the eruptor it's filling its role perfectly the problem with the machine guns was not that they were not good enough per se but that they were a lower level stratagem that once you had unlocked the higher level ones and started playing on higher levels you couldn't justify still taking them but with the stalwart for example it has three magazines and 250 rounds in each has different selections of rpm and is amazing at crowd control and killing light armored enemies so if you take a primary weapon the eruptor that's weaker than a stratagem but can fill a similar role and is not as strong as what other primary weapons can do in terms of killing multiple multiple enemies closer up and a stratagem like the stalwart that can kill multiple enemies up close without putting your teammates or yourself at risk but fall short when dealing with enemy structures or medium to heavy armored enemies then what do you have balance i just want to add that the developers do listen to communities especially this one and if everyone starts immediately talking about a new weapon or stratagem being trash or op then you shouldn't be surprised if it gets buffed or nerfed of course them comments at times are warranted but i've seen people who don't know that this can destroy fabricators say it's trash and other people who don't know it's a bolt action sniper rifle and a slow af saying it's op so just relax as we say over here and make sure to give the weapon a good few hours before passing extreme judgment and that's it so if you did enjoy the video 
please subscribe. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.